All right, in this video, we will talk about current sources, a source that provides a constant current instead of a constant voltage. Now, these are not really as common as voltage sources, and they're not really a single physical thing like a battery. You actually need to build a circuit made out of, made out of other parts to create something that effectively acts like a constant current source, but you still might encounter them, so we're gonna go over them briefly in this video. So, as you saw, the symbol for a current source, in this case, it's a circle with an arrow, in it, the arrow indicates the direction of conventional current, not electron flow, so that is the direction of flow of positive current. We have a video earlier in this series about conventional current, if you're not familiar with that. And as with an ideal voltage source providing a constant voltage no matter what, the ideal current source provides a constant current no matter what and adjusts its voltage. So again, if we look at an IV diagram, <clears throat> we have a constant current no matter what and this current source is capable of adjusting its voltage depending on the external you lo load that you apply. I think that's a little less intuitive than the idea of a voltage source providing a variable current, but you just have to think of this as a constant current line and it's going to adjust the voltage. So for example, if we connect some external resistor to your constant current source, <coughs> excuse me, Everything is still going to follow Ohm's law, V equals IR, except in this case, it's your current that is fixed because the current source provides a constant current. So you would solve for your voltage based on this external resistance. Now, just like if you remember with a constant voltage source, if we short circuited that with R equals zero, then we would get an infinite current. In this case, if our resistance goes to infinity, then we are going to get an infinite voltage. And just like how it's not physically possible to get infinite current out of a practical voltage source like a battery, it's not possible to somehow get infinite voltage out of a practical current source. So we need a model of a practical current source that accounts for the physical limits of what it can really do. So just like with the practical voltage source, we modeled that as a resistance in series with the voltage source. With a practical current source, we're going to model that as a resistance in parallel with an ideal volt, sorry, ideal current source. So this is gonna be our model of our practical current source here with some internal resistance RS, and we're gonna connect that to our external load resistor RL. So in this case, we have the total current coming from the source IS, and that is going to split into current that goes through the load, IL, and the current that goes through the internal resistance, I'll call that IRS. So we know from Kirchhoff's current law at this node that IS equals IRS plus IL. And ideally we want <coughs> as much current as possible to go through our load, so we want this number to be almost zero. Now, what we have here is something called a current divider, which is conceptually similar to a voltage divider. <coughs> I do not have a separate video about that, and I'm not going to go through the derivation, but you can go through a very similar process you did for the voltage divider and arrive at an equation for the load current based on the resistor values and the source current. In this case, that's going to be RS over RS plus RL times IS. And again, remembering that you want this load current to be as close as possible to the source current. That means you want this fraction to be as close as possible to one and you accomplish that by having RS very, very large. So if RS is a very, very big number, then this fraction basically becomes RS over RS. If RL is negligible, this fraction becomes one, and your load current will just be equal to one times your source current. So unlike, again, the <clears throat> voltage source case where you wanted the source resistance to be very close to zero, in the current source case, you want the source resistance of this model to be very close to infinity, so that way you have very little current going through this internal resistor, and most of your current is going through your external load. So this also solves our problem of infinite voltage, because if we always have this internal source resistance in parallel, then even if we have no external load, so basically we're saying our load resistance is infinity, which is what we had up here, then we still have our internal resistance RS and our current IS, so that's just gonna follow Ohm's law. The voltage source is gonna be IS 
RS instead of going off to infinity. So again, when we have the practical model, this gives us this more realistic idea that some of our current is going to be kind of siphoned off inside the source here. It's not all going to be delivered to the load, but we are not going to get mathematically this problem of an infinite voltage if we have an open circuit or infinite resistance across the source. So again, you're not gonna encounter these as frequently as you will with things like voltage sources in an intro electronics course most of the time. One place you might see them is with solar cells, which are not, again, not ideal, but they do have a region of operation where they operate more like a constant current source as opposed to a constant voltage source. So that could be one case where this can come up, but again, in, in general, I don't think you're gonna see them as much in practice in a laboratory course. So in our next video, we've been talking about measurements a bunch. We're actually going to start talking about practical voltmeters and ammeters. So what's the difference between an ideal voltmeter that doesn't affect the circuit at all or an ideal ammeter and the practical case where they do in fact affect what you are measuring.